Then it's code in the D to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's oh boys, can't you code it? <laughs> Program it right. Nothing ever happens in the Hey guys, welcome back to my video series on using Stata for statistical analysis. We've been working on a set of videos looking at regression analysis, and this video uh, fits right into that section pretty nicely. It's part of our post-estimation commands. Once we get our model established and uh, estimated, the fun begins where we start looking at um, results of our model. So today, uh, we're going to look at a very simple example of using margins and margins plot. Those two commands go hand in hand. Um, for this series of videos, I've been using the General Social Survey. Our dependent variable is occupational prestige. This is a scale that ranges from approximately 17 to 86. Our primary deep, uh, independent variable is going to be number of years of education. So let's go ahead and run our first regression model. We're simply in line 6 going to regress the occupational prestige measure on the education measure. And these are for data from 2010. What I'm going to do is highlight this line by clicking on the 6, and then I'm going to come up here into the bar and, uh, and click on the Execute Selection command. There's our results, uh, very typical regression results. Let's go right to the coefficient. We can see that our regression coefficient for education is approximately 2.3. This tells us that, on average, as education increases by a year, occupational prestige increases by approximately 2.3. We get a t-statistic and a confidence interval. Now, what the margins command is going to do is basically look at our model, use this model to um, give us the expected value uh, for this particular dependent variable, which is occupational prestige. So let's go ahead and run that. So here we get our result of margins. It's not that impressive, but we learn that based on this model our average predicted value is approximately 53.5. We can also use margins plot right after this command to get a visualization. And if I click on line 9 and execute we'll get our first visualization. Now this is not particularly uh, impressive but uh, literally it's taking the information from this table, it's taking the mean, it's plotting it as the point in the middle and then we have our 95 percent confidence interval so we have those confidence bars going around it. So this is kind of interesting but margins has much more to it. Uh, we can um, hold a variable constant at a particular value. For example, in line 11, I'm going to go ahead and issue the margins command and come up with the margins for when education is equal to 10 years of education. Let me close this graphic and we'll go ahead and look at that. We can see now we get a value of 35. Well, it's lower than the 43, and it should be because we know that as education goes up, on average, occupational prestige goes up. And conversely, for lower levels of education, um, occupational prestige is lower as well. Margins, um, we could also visualize this, and we could get the confidence interval around this particular value. But you could now you can start thinking more expansively. Well, what if we could use margins to look at make predictions, look at our predictions, our y hats, for different values of education. For example, let the in line 12, when I execute this line, I'm going to get the margins for uh, for people who have 10 years of education and people who have 15 years of education. And there's our results. So let's look at this margins table and see if we can make sense of what's going on. We've, we've uh, constrained education to be fixed at a value of 10 and a value of 15. What the margins command will do is use the value of 10 for everybody in our sample and make a predicted value of their occupational prestige and then produce an average of that. And that's where we get our uh, roughly 35. When we constrain education to be equal to 15, it takes that same set of people and now says, what if their education was 15, calculates the um, average, calculates a y hat or predicted value, and then averages them, and we get our um, marginal value of approximately 47. If I take those two values and calculate the difference of them, 
And I'm going to use the display command to do this in line 14. I'm just going to calculate the arithmetic difference between these two margins. We can see that they're approximately, that the occupational prestige is approximately 11 different across these two values. Now, we also know that um, our beta hat sub 1, our coefficient for, edu for education, is approximately 2.3, and that there's a five year difference here between 10 and 15 years of education. So I should be able to capture uh, or reconstruct this difference by looking at my regression coefficient times 5. I can get to that regression coefficient by using that underscore b and then those square brackets in the name of the variable. So this will go ahead and use the, use the uh, beta hat sub 1 that's calculated in my regression model. And sure enough, I get uh, the exact same value. So now you can start seeing that you know this becomes a very powerful tool. If I'm interested in comparing people that have uh, comparing um, marginal values for 10 years of education to 15, I'm able to hold those factors constant, set them at these values, and compare them. But I can do even more than that. Let's go down there and look at uh, the code in line 17 through line 20. So 17, I'm just going to go rerun my model. Then I'm going to issue my margins command. And now I'm using an option called at. And what I'm going to do, um, it's the same as the at command before, but I'm going to put in more values. My education variable in this particular data set ranges from 0 to 20. So I'm going to use the state of convention to start at 0, increment by 1, and end at 20. So this will calculate the margins for people with that, for setting education equal to 0, setting education equal to 1, equal to 2, and so forth up through 20. Then my margins plot, instead of plotting a single uh, margins with a confidence interval, will plot 21 margins with their confidence intervals. Let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So there's my margins table. Now the margins table uh, certainly can be interpreted, but it's really just a listing of the data, and I don't spend a lot of time looking at it. I go right to the visualization. The only difference between this visualization and the one before is I'm adding an option to give this a name. So I'm going to call this margins1. Here's the default plot that we get. So <clears throat> what we're getting is, in essence, a uh, scatter plot with the points for each of the margins plotted and then confidence bars for our 95% confidence intervals. This is not a great graphic. I mean, it's certainly fine for me to examine it uh, quickly and get a sense of what's going on, but I want to show you two more options that make this graphic much stronger. In line 20, I'm issuing the same margins plot command, but now I'm adding an option called recast. So I'm taking the default uh, margins plot, which is a scatter plot, and saying, let's make it a line plot. It's going to get rid of those big points in the middle, but leave the line. And then I'm going to use the recast CI option, where CI is for confidence interval, and I'm going to use the R area option to turn this into a shaded area um, instead of these individual lines. And I'm going to call this graphic margins 2. And I can put these side by side. You can see that these graphics are identical to one another except for the way the data are visualized. But they contain the same information. I happen to like the one on the right um, a lot better than the one on the left. But for a quick quick glance at the data, the one on the left is certainly sufficient. The last problem I want to look at here is to show you really some of the one of the more powerful features of margins when we have quadratic terms. Now I'm going to run a new regression. I'm going to regress, regress the occupational prestige variable onto the education variable and an interaction variable of education with itself. So what we're, what we're saying here is that while we know that uh, education has an additive effect to um, relationship with occupational prestige, is there a multiplicative one as well? That is, we really have to specify th that, that, the, that the rate of change changes uh, by level of education. So I'm using factor notation here, which I've covered in another video, and to um, calculate this regression, I just do c.educ, the c informs data that this is a continuous variable, pound sign, pound sign, so this is going to be uh, create a main effect and an interaction effect, and then the variable I'm interacting it with, which is c.educ. 
let's go ahead and take a look at our regression output. We can see that our education variable uh, has a large enough t-statistic to be statistically significant. Um, we can see that our interaction term also is statistically significant and positive. So let's go ahead and calculate our margins for each year of education the way I did before, and let's visualize it in the same way that I did before and see what we get. I'm not going to spend time looking at the numbers in the table. I'll go right to the visualization. And sure enough, we find, we find that there seems to be an interaction effect here where um, for lower levels of education, there's very little increase in occupational prestige with each year of increase. But once we get to you know, roughly uh, 10 years of education, maybe high school 12 years of education, that each additional year of education confers greater and greater amounts of occupational prestige. We can also see very quickly that our best estimates tend to be in the middle of the distribution of uh, years of education. Not surprising be, uh, given that the average number of years of education is close to 12 years, but we also can understand that our worst estimates are down at the low levels of education because there's very few people down there. Our estimates are inherently weaker because we have few people with 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 years of education. I hope this video helps get you going on margins. We're going to have other videos that look at some of the more advanced features and, and more advanced problems. Uh, one thing you'll really like about margins is when we start looking at nonlinear relationships with logistic regression. Margins really keeps track of those interaction terms and calculates the marginal effects perfectly. As usual, if you have any questions, please let me know and I'll do my best to answer them. And it's code in the day to give the keyboard a punch. Wow. Then cross, correlate, and a break for some lunch. Wow. Correlate, tabulate, process, and screen. Wow. Program, print out, regress to the mean. And it's old oh, boys, can't you code it? Whoop. Program it right. Nothing else.